What's up guys and welcome to Boundary Break, a new series that I'm going to be creating to show you an exclusive look around the outsides of your favourite maps in Rainbow Six Siege. Today we're going to be covering three maps that I've chosen myself, House, Chalet and Oregon. But if you have any suggestions for maps that you want to see in future videos, then make sure you let me know down in the comments. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you are new because this series has taken me a long time to create. And without further ado, let's get into it. Getting straight into it with our first map, House. Now this is a lot of people's as well as my favourite map in the game and it's got a really awesome background to it. Now a lot of you may already have seen some of the outside of this map through some of my modded videos but there's a whole lot more that we've yet to explore which I'll be showing you. First easter egg hidden on this map is right up this slide outside of the children's bedroom area where there is this creepy red balloon which of course is a little tidbit to the IT series. Heading along the main road outside of the front of the house, this is where we first reach the edge of the map. As you can see, a lot of these 2D trees are in place around the map, and as we turn our attention over to the other side of the street, we can see a nice construction area which has lots of unfinished construction buildings. Much like in Detroit, the residents must have realised they can't have shit. Now moving on a little further behind the construction site and it's here where we begin to see some really nice large open fields with some quite nice views in an area that no normal player would normally see and it was here where I spotted something rather interesting. Right on the very edge of the map I spotted what appeared to be the silhouette of a city skyline. Now this immediately grabbed my attention because I wanted to see if I could figure out what city that was. Now as I kept running to try and get as close as possible to this silhouette, I could really begin to make out some of the shapes of the buildings of that skyline. And that was when I remembered that the Ubisoft HQ is in Montreal in Canada. So I did a little bit of research and I found this image of the Montreal skyline. Now let me know if you see any similarities here, but I'll show you the ones that I saw. These two square shaped buildings with a little knot on the top as well as these two L-shaped buildings and the two rectangular buildings on the left hand side. Now I'll admit the two skylines aren't exactly the same but it was quite difficult to find the perfect angle for the image but let me know if you think that this skyline is a different city. Now heading back over closer to the map over to the lake on the far side it's here where we begin to see the sheer size of the map and I'm not just talking about the main part of the map where the players are in. Now I found this cute little boat but much like my ex-girlfriend it's fake in 2D. Looking back over to the main part of the map you can really begin to see how much bigger the lake is than the rest of the map. Now I wanted to head as far away from the map as I possibly could to see how big the lake actually was and I was getting actually quite far up to the point where I found this small little island. Now I'm not sure why this island is here seeing as how no player should actually be over here but it's amazing how much detail Ubisoft put into their map designs. I was taking it all in having a look around at my surroundings when suddenly I died. Heading over to map number 2, Chalet, and I chose this map because after playing it recently, I realised it's probably the most impressive map in the entire game, and I think it deserved a proper look around. Heading straight in, and it's clear to see the level of detail that Ubisoft put into designing this map. The number of trees, rocks, snow, and buildings that just serve as a background is extremely impressive. As we begin to head further out on the back portion of the map, breaking past the 2D trees, it's safe to say that this is probably the biggest map in the entire game, based on the background alone. All of the surrounding mountains, rocks and trees, as well as the glacier below, is massive. The thing that I love about this map is it really does absorb you into the location, making you feel like you really are there in the Alps. It's impossible to deny that it makes you feel like you're in a real ski resort. It's only as we keep going further, right to the very edge of the map, as we go underneath the floor, that we are truly right at the edge of the map. Looking back, you can see how much the size of the landscape dwarfs the map itself, which is now hundreds of metres behind us. I wanted to keep going to see how far I could actually go, so I kept on running, looking up at the 2D trees above me, until I was starved of oxygen and died. Heading back over to the main part of the map and out the front end this time. As we head underneath the map we can see 
this massive glacier below us, heading down into the valley. As we move further out away from the map, we can see this nice view of the whole map, with a nice road below, and if you aren't careful, just like the tunnel in Paris, I'll make it look like an accident. As we take a further look around the front end of the map, I think it's fair to say that this side is even more impressive than the back. As you look back onto the main part of the map, you can really appreciate the level of detail. I wanted to see how far to the edge of the map I could get on the front end, and I was getting quite close to the gap between the mountains, when, after triggering an avalanche, I died. On to the third and final map for today's episode, and it is Oregon. This was another one I was quite interested in, as the whole map has quite a lot of extra detail added to it, so I thought it'd be fun to look around. Anyway, as this is the last map, please let me know if you've enjoyed this so far by leaving a comment and a like down below. I do plan on continuing the series, so please let me know if you want to see more. But anyway, let's get into it. Out on the street on the front of the map, we can head inside this police car and have a look what's playing on the radio. However, there's nothing playing as there's no one there, and that would be quite stupid. As we explore further out the front of the map, outside of the boundaries, we can see what I can only imagine Oregon really looks like. Anyone who is from Oregon who is watching this video, please confirm if this is true. As I kept heading out further into the vast expanses of nothingness which is Oregon, I found what looked like a road marked in the ground, so I decided to follow it. As I headed past my good friend, the 2D trees, I found what appeared to look like a tunnel. Upon further inspection, I found that it was just in fact a massive green wall. As I stepped through to the other side, I actually expected to die, because I thought this was the edge of the map, but no. I was able to walk through safely onto the other side, or so I thought. Back over to the main part of the map by the junkyard spawn. If we head through this wall, we can see there's a lonely van on the other side, completely trapped and isolated. I don't know why it's on the other side of this wall, but it is. Back inside the map, I found that if I repelled up the small tower wall, I could actually crawl inside this attic area. And that was until I realised I was completely stuck. As we head outside the map once again, over to what I can only guess is a tobacco plantation. I'm not an expert so please don't quote me on that. We can see that these plants appear to be affected by a 2D plague that is causing them to dry out and blacken in the Oregon sun. Past the plantation, I spotted something in the distance and I decided to go take a closer look at it. Now I was actually surprised that there was anything this far out, but I found what appeared to be some sort of practice model for the Oregon itself. As you can see, the one on the right quite resembles the front garage entrance on Oregon. But the one on the left, I'm not too sure. This one just looks like the roof of the attic. But let me know what you guys think this is. I wanted to see if this highway next to the practice models led to anywhere. So as I was speeding along at 100 miles an hour, reaching speeds that you would not expect a human to be able to reach, but then you remember that I'm playing Ash. And it was at that point where I lost control, causing a fatal crash which immediately killed me. By that point, I was finished with my exploration, so I decided to put Ash in jail, where she quite frankly belongs. But anyway guys, that about does it for this first episode of Boundary Break. I really hope you did enjoy. I've been working on this for a long time, so please let me know if you want to see more. Remember to leave a comment to let me know what maps you want to see in the next episode. I appreciate if you've made it this far, and I hope you consider subscribing and leaving a like. But anyway, that's all from me.